we've previously seen that if we know the probability of the system being in a given state, and we know this probability for every state, that we can use the Gibbs entropy formula to get our entropy just by summing uh, the minus Boltzmann factor times sum of probability times log of probability. But uh, we have this object called the partition function that we can calculate and is a lot easier to work with than the probability for any given state. So we'd prefer to work with the partition function if we could in order to calculate the absolute value of entropy uh, from theory, from statistical mechanics. So these probabilities are equal to the Boltzmann factor e to the minus energy divided by uh, Boltzmann constant times temperature for a given state divided by the partition function. And the partition function is just the sum of all the Boltzmann factors for all states i. So the formula that we want, if you take this, these two equations here and then substitute them in there and do a sufficient amount of algebra, the formula you should end up with, or an equivalent formula you should end up with, is that S equals Boltzmann constant times log of partition function, KB ln Q, plus KBT, temperature, times the partial derivative of the log, the natural logarithm of the partition function with respect to t, and that at constant number of particles and volume, the other variables for your partition function. Okay, so that is the formula which we would use if we were interest, if we had a given partition function and we want to calculate what the entropy of that system is which has that partition function. Okay, so when we have an aggregate partition function of a system of n particles, Q is a function of number of particles, volume, and temperature, and that's going to equal the partition function of an individual particle Q of VT, that partition function of an individual particle to the nth power divided by n factorial. And this is for a set of n indistinguishable independent particles. So the energy, the particles can't be interacting with each other to have a partition function like this. So this would be for something like an ideal gas. And then we've shown previously that even within the partition function of that uh, individual molecule, there are multiple parts to it. There's going to be a translational part, a rotational part, a vibrational part, and an electronic part. And for the most part, the electronic part, uh, particles are pretty much going to stay in the ground state unless you're at very high temperatures or there are very low-lying excited states. For the most part, vibrations don't contribute that much to entropy. They can once you get to temperatures in the hundreds of Kelvin or if you have very, very weak vibrational modes. And then rotations contribute somewhat and translations contribute a lot as a function of temperature. So to remind ourselves, let's look at the translational partition function of an, a single ideal gas particle. And we derived that in a previous video to be 2 pi mass of the molecule or whatever compound it is, KBT, Boltzmann constant times temperature, divided by Planck's constant squared, all of that to the 3 halves power and then times the volume of the system. Okay, so let's look at what the entropy contribution would be just from this translational part. So there will be an entropy contribution from the translational part, from the rotational part, from the vibrational and electronic parts. Those quantities are all independent because we're going to be taking logs here. So when you take a log, you can separate these out into their different components. So if we want to calculate the translational entropy for a single particle here of an ideal gas of its translational co uh, translational component that would be Boltzmann constant times log of this whole value here 2 pi m k 
kbt over h squared to the 3 halves times v plus kbt. And then the partial derivative with respect to temperature of the natural log of this partition function. And as we saw during uh, the videos on statistical mechanics, what we're going to get is a log of this thing here, as we have right there. And you can separate that because these are multiplicative. We can separate that into something which is, um, so we have t to the 3 halves. We can separate that into something which is log of t to the 3 halves plus other stuff which doesn't depend on t. So the only term in here which is going to matter for t in terms of the natural log of t will be this uh, one term right there. So we have the translational entropy of one particle. Again, will be this term down here. That term is the same, plus kbt times partial derivative of log t to the 3 halves. So log t to the 3 halves is equivalent to 3 halves log t, and the derivative of log t is 1 over t. So this is going to be kbt times this result inside here will be 3 halves times 1 over t. And this t will cancel with that t, so what you're left with there is 3 halves kb. All right, so we have S trans equals, all right, so we got 3 halves kb plus our kb ln q term. I'm not going to write out that whole term again. So it's that, and then if we multiply this times uh, number of particles, entropy is going to be additive. Each particle is going to have this much translational entropy. So n particles are going to have n times this. But also note that n times kb, number of particles times Boltzmann constant, is equal to number of, number of moles times gas constant. So what we can also put in there is that S trans for a given set of particles is going to be 3 halves nr plus our kb r. So this term as well be, gets multiplied by n, that becomes nr. So that becomes nr log q. Okay, and then if we take that to molar entropy as well, Remember, molar entropy, we just take our entropy and divide by number of moles or divide by n. So our molar translational entropy is going to be 3 halves r plus r log q. So the dominant factor which is coming into play here is the fact that we get this 3 halves r of entropy from this uh, temperature dependence of the log of this partition function. And then there's some amount which also contributes from um, the log of the partition function itself, but that varies much slower with temperature because you've just got the log of temperature inside of there. So this term doesn't vary much with temperature. This term is constant with temperature. So you see, this is where we get our 3 halves R, and this is the dominant contributing factor for most gas molecules to what their entropy is. So then there will be a lesser contribution from rotations, very small from vibrations, and almost nothing there coming from electronic. Okay, so if we use a specific example, if we use, say, N2, if we have our S calcul, if we call this S bar calc, so if we calculated it for rotational, vibrational, and electronic as well, and we calculated it all, let's instead of this, so we're going to use the standard entropy so that being at a uh, 298 Kelvin. So we're going to say S bar calc. This is going to be for N2 gas. 
looking up the value of this, if you calculate it from the partition function of n2, which there are explicit forms to these three terms as well, you'll get something on the order of 191.5 joules per Kelvin mole. And if you do so by experiment, if you do so by calorimetry, what you'll get is 191.6. Let me draw a better six, six there. 191.6 joules per Kelvin mole. So you have a very good agreement there between theory and experiment. So that's a good thing because the theory in terms of these partition functions is reliable. We can use it to predict what these uh, standard molar entropies are going to be and what the entropy at a given temperature is going to be. Uh, and generally tables of these are going to be combinations of calculated and experimental entropies because you can kind of improve your guess by showing that there's a large synergy between theory and experiment there. And oftentimes it's some uh, combination of the two of them which is listed in